so I'll start with the reports once again so like a, let us say you know like a consider requirement you know like a design an invoice report okay considering the considering the existing standard report so the requirement is your client want to design an invoice report okay well, let us say I'll especially say AR invoice report because we have the receivables or payables right so AP invoice report or AR invoice report so now receivable invoice report is nothing but like uh, when you perform a sales order you'll get some amount right that is a receivable invoice report so now client want to design an invoice design and design AR invoice report but considering the standard report so generally like one more thing you have to remember in every standard module you have a standard report so do you know what is what do you mean by standard report or any dots what is standard report what do you mean by standard report Standard report means a report which is provided by Oracle. It's called standard report. Okay, so it can be either RDF based report or it can be XML report also. Technology doesn't matter. What matters is who provided it. So if we, if a report is provided by Oracle, it is called standard report. So one more thing is like uh, when already Oracle has provided, what is the need for us to design a report? The thing is Oracle generally designs a report considering the generic functionality, right? So it just keeps a general clients in the mind and design the report accordingly. But every client may not have may may not like the may may not like the layout which Oracle provided or may not like the data which Oracle has provided within the report, right? So you may you may need to modify it. You may need to customize it, right? So let us say, assume that you know like a standard report standard report is based on RDF and the file name is AR invoice dot RDF. And now as a developer you know like your client says that he wants some information he wants some information to be shown in the report and you need to change the data model then what we have to do is so this AR invoice report standard report will be available in the AR top right this is this will be available in the AR top reports US folder then first basic thing you what you have to do is you copy the report copy the report and rename it to XX AR invoice RDF this is the first step you have to do it and then update the data model nothing but update, update the queries and other thing layout whatever required and then copy the file to your custom top if you are having a custom top you have to move to custom top only xx cus top reports us folder once you move the file to custom top then perform the remaining process perform the executable i mean create the concurrent executable create the concurrent program that's it and one more thing you have to remember is like when you are so when you are you know like when you're working with a standard report and modifying it so the best thing is the best thing what you have to do is here the standard report may already have a set of parameters right so you know it is very difficult for you to create the parameters again what is the best thing you have to do is you have to perform the copy of the concurrent program while creating a concurrent program we have an option called copy to did you ever observe let me show you that see application developer uh concurrent program can you see there's a button called con copy to right so we have to use this option the reason is the reason is let me tell you okay this invoice prints letter invoice is the name okay so this is a standard report name this is a standard report name on which we want to modify it okay so now what i'm trying to tell you is first of all 
you will get this RDF file, isn't it? This is based on. Is this based on RDF or not? Yes, sir. So, do, is it showing RDF file name here? Is it showing any RDF file name? It is not showing, right? That will be available in the concurrent executable only. So, go to concurrent executable first of all and mention this one here. And you got the file name RAXINV. And this is available in which application? Receivable application. So, now I'm, I'll try to tell you this one. So, now let us say this is our file name. And you just need to rename it to XX followed by your file name dot RDF. So, let me, I'll just show you the process, okay? It is very much important for you when you're working in an upgrade or maybe normal implementation projects also. So stop me if you if you don't if you don't get like if you are getting any confusion here. As we I I remember that you know we are working on workflow, but I just want to tell you this important one, okay? Any doubts or any confusion are okay? Yes. Clear? Yes. Okay. So now I what I have to do? I have to go to AR, get the file name, right? Reports, ES folder. I have to get the file. So what is the file name? ARXINV, right? RAXINV, sorry. RAX, RAXINV dot RDF. So always, you know, make sure the name is correct, okay? Because you will have a similar name which differs only with the one, one letter also. So make sure that. You copy the appropriate one. Copy the file. Okay, now you got the file. What you do? What we do now? I'll just, you know, like a rename here. I'll just rename. I'll just say XX. That's it. This is the first step you have to do it. Now what is the next step? Open the file using your RDF builder. Report builder. So what is what we are discussing now is like how do you work on a standard report? If at all if you get any requirement to modify the standard report, how do you work on it? That is what we are discussing now. Okay. Open the file now and observe whether it will allow you to open or not. So what it is telling? There exists some uncompiled. This could be because of connection to database. Okay. So the best thing is when you are opening a standard report, before opening it, create a connection. I mean to say connect to the database. Now what I will do is I will remove this one here. First of all, connect to the database. So when you are opening standard reports, this is the best thing. First of all, you have to connect to the database and then open the report. Now try to open it again. Now see whether it will give any error or not now. Okay, now it did not give any error. Understood? Yes. Okay, now what we do is let us open the data model here and this will be huge, you know, like it is very, very complicated. Okay, it's much complicated. Fine. So now, one more thing is, so what is this? Is it? So it is based on XML report, right? Because it is having the output format as XML. So it is an XML report, correct? Yes or no? For XML, Sorry. One minute, one minute. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. This is the one, right? What is the output format? Output format is XML. Yes. So if the output format is XML, it means that it is based on RTF template, correct? Yes, sir. Understood? Yeah. Okay. Now, let us say you have a requirement to modify some data. Nothing but you want to include some particular functionality. Okay. Then what you do? First of all, we got the file. We, re we renamed the file, right? And, uh, you know, like, let us say, like, wherever you require, just modify it accordingly. So this will be very much huge. We have to be very much careful when you are working on these kind of standard reports. Okay? Can you see how many data models we have here? Very bigger one, right? Yeah. See how many like this number of parameters, cursor parameter, functions, placeholders. Okay? And do you see here? It simply says dual. Yeah. And what it is doing? It is appending a lexical query 
can you see common query just mention union all common query but what is this, what is this common query this is the one which is having the total query so what you can do you can search for the common query and find out if you want to modify anything there so how do you find it so first of all you have to open any of the PL SQL window in the report then only it allow you to perform search so what I will do now is easier approach is open any of the existing one any of the existing trigger window program unit now perform edit find and replace in PL SQL don't replace just find find all got it it shows the result and click on that it will show you where exactly it is used now this is a common query right so this is a query which is getting replaced at runtime got it fine okay so I'm not doing any modifications right now so I'll just say that assume that I have modified something then what you do perform compilation okay it compiles successfully what is next what we have to do now where do we have to move now we have to move to FND top right in our case it is FND but in your case let us if you work in a client location that should be your custom top correct now I'll just copy the file okay I copy the file now okay now so this is my standard program name right this is my standard program name and this is my okay now what I have to do I have to register my custom report isn't it what I have to do I have to register my custom report so now first of all what I will do is I will register my concurrent executable concurrent executable so here what I will do I'll just mention my this name correct now what what do you do next go to concurrent program now here you know like I have to register my custom program name right but what is the easiest and the best approach is as we are working on the standard report you know like I don't know how many parameters the standard report is having observe first of all see observe how many parameters as well as how many functionalities are there in the standard report just click on parameters and just see it can you see these number of parameters are there do you think that you know like if you do if you create one if you create one like a parameters one by one will it be, will it work first of all it may work but it's a tedious job right as it's a as as it is a manual process there are chances you may have some issues there isn't it it is very difficult you know like uh, for each parameter you have to you have to know what is the value set what is the de default value and all these things yes. why are we bothering about parameters because our report is based on the standard report right that's how it was designed so you know we can't check line by line coding right it will take months and years to finish the task if at all if you do in that way isn't it so what we do is generally like whatever the requirement just fix that particular area and let's do it else you know like it is very difficult to work on the area right because you will not have much time to work on any of the given components clear now what I will do is open the standard report first and just perform copy to okay perform copy to now here what I will do I'll just mention my report name so always generally like we may have client name followed by your report name this is what we generally do it I'll just say XXLT and also mention the short name so in our case I'll just go with my short name XXRXINV okay In include parameters remember this one include parameter this has to be selected because we want to include parameters also right now just see this one yeah, application also we have to change it now what all we have to change it we have to change application and any other thing do we need to change this one also right this also we have to change isn't it xx rx inv and now check the parameters whether they are available or not got it understand now save this one now try to run this report from the 
receivables responsibility and check out whether it will work or not. Then only it will be correct, right? So now what I have to do? This report I have to assign to receivable responsibility, isn't it? So first of all, go to system administrator, responsibility, receivables, USA. Yeah, receivables, vision operation, USA. This is the responsibility name. What is the request group? Receivables all is the request group, right? Open the request group. Now assign our report. Okay. Now go to receivables, vision operations, USA and request. First of all, check out whether standard report is there or not. Right, standard report is there here. So we added our report at this place only. So I'll just select some transaction number. Transaction number is nothing but the invoice number. RA customer transactions all table, right? Okay, not sure whether you may get output or not, but let's see. It all depends upon the invoice number, right? We have to have a proper data, then only it will work. Okay, let's see whether we have an output or not. Click on view output. And it is selecting an RTF format. Yep, we got some data, right? Very good. So we got the data in RDF, RTF format. So this is invoice number. This is a, you know, like a, a calculation, some, some description item kind of things. Now what we do, the same way, run our custom report with the same invoice number. Submit new request, XXLT. Now, do you see, right? This is our custom report now. Now we'll also try to modify, we'll also try to modify our report also. Now it is not showing, if you observe, it is not showing any template. Why? Because this is an RTF based, uh, this is an RTF based, XML based report, right? So we have not attached our template. So what we have to do, go to application developer, first of all, and here check the current current program okay now observe here observe the standard report first of all this was a standard report right so here this was a short name so that we already have a template with this name just observe that first of all sometimes this may not this doesn't show properly so try refreshing if still doesn't show, the only option what we have is we can go from here, X1 Publisher, Data Definition. Based on Data Definition, you have to get the template name, right? So this is a Data Definition, right? RX Invoice, now now ADS Invoice. This is a Data Definition name. Now click on go. Now you'll get a template, right? ADS Busting Invoice Template. Click on this one. Right? It is a template. Right? Download. Save it. So I'll save in our folder. Let us save here. Okay, so I'm just saving here. I'll say XX RA invoice template. 
okay now this is the template now what i will do i'll just modify some data here i'll just modify the template because i just want to change the layout so i'll just delete the oracle logo okay and i'll just insert some clipboard or you know some my customer logo okay as i don't have customer logo i'll just include some particular shapes here copy okay got it save it now what we have to do we have to register the data definition as well as template all right we are defining everything from scratch what we are doing is we are just right rather than designing our rdf report from the scratch we are making use of the existing standard report that's the difference got it or click on data definition now create the data definition so this was our short name right apply template create template I'm not verifying it, okay, because we don't have data and it's very difficult to verify the standard report generally. So let's try whether it works or not. If it doesn't work, then we have to verify from our local machine. Now try to run the report again. Go to receivables. What was the invoice number? This was the invoice number. Transaction number. Now, do you see the template? Safiya, are you understanding the process or? See, either way it will work, but you know, like I'm trying to run from receivables, receivable manager. see why are we running the reports from application developer because you know like uh, it's considering that you know still we are working on a development environment right but generally what we do is whenever you get any requirement it all depends upon the functionality of the report let us say if you are working on a receivables report we always assign that to a receivable responsibility only let us say if you are working in a financial report that will be assigned to a gl gl responsibility only that's what we do we generally we'll never assign any of the reports to application developer okay so a report will be assigned to a particular module based on the data what you are, what you are trying to represent in that let us say if it's a pay slip what do you do that will get assigned to human resources hrms module so let's see click on submit so now this, what we are trying to do is we are just making use of the standard report and design our custom report got it So it got finished, but let's see whether it got it. Okay. Understood what we have done so far. So we got the output in a standard report and what we want to do is as per the customer, they want to modify the template and they also want to modify the data model. I mean, as of now we have not modified the data model but you know we just took our took the standard rdf report and we have renamed it right and we created a new concurrent executable new concurrent program and also we created a new data definition and new template but everywhere we use the oracle provider source code only isn't it yes sir. right 
this is the approach when you are working in a standard report when you when you want to modify the standard report generally you, you should never replace any other standard report that's what if you know like if you if oracle allows you to modify the standard report then we does not need to do all these things right we can just modify the existing rdf file itself that's not the correct way we, ne we should never modify any of the standard file at all always get the copy rename it and work on it clear okay so i want you all you also do like this try to work on it try to design one sample then you'll have a clear picture on this okay so other thing which i want to show you is now we have like uh, we discussed about the standard report approach when you're working a standard report but let us say you if you get any requirement to modify the standard workflow what you do if you get any requirement to modify the standard workflow what do you do that is the approach which we want to discuss now okay now so i'll consider one particular workflow called po workflow purchase order workflow see for every module whenever you have an approval hierarchy mostly workflow will be used in the background so first of all let me show you let me show you like uh, how do you create a purchase order and then see which workflow it is getting kicked off clear i'll go to purchase order responsibility now go to purchase order i logged in with the user operation because this operation user is already having a setups which are necessary to create a purchase order click on purchase order now this requires supplier information supplier site information and then now mention the line here okay category okay mention the mandatory parameters i'll just mentioning them now click on shipments and here click on distributions and in the distribution we have to select the pivo charge account so when you are purchasing something we are just really telling for which particular for which particular you know like account you want to make like make this expenses into because let us say you are buying some particular items from a customer from a supplier i mean let us say you have a supplier and you are buying around five items from him and you know like as you belong to a purchase order department so when you are booking some particular item with a supplier you know like you have five items to book and each item belongs to a particular department i mean to say let us say you have a request from the hr department you have a request from hrms department and you have a request from the supply chain department and you have a request from the administrative department so each item should be charged based on the charged based on their department right so you can't charge all the item all the expenses to a single department isn't it even the purchase order even though the whole on the purchase order is single one but each item level each line level you can account to each 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 particular line you can you know like uh, you can charge for a particular particular account that's what it is are you getting yes. or maybe a simple example I'll tell you let us say assume that you know like you bought some groceries or maybe some particular items from a supermarket verify carefully this time maybe if you go again what you do is you buy some particular vegetables and you just buy some other perishable goods like you know oil packet or maybe uh, try to you know like, like uh, buy the the soap or these kind of things and observe the tax percentage on them if it is a vegetable you will have a zero tax if it is a normal bakery product it will be 4.5 tax if it is normal you know like the toilet soaps or like that they will have a 14.5 percentage tax are you getting based on the item you will have a different tax and here also what we are trying to do is based on a particular item we want to charge we want to charge that to a particular department i mean to say char PO charge account we call it as got it I'll save this one and this is our PO number so in which table you'll have a PO, PO information in which table does it stores PO headers, PO headers all right yes. which column is the purchase order number segment one, segment one. This should be in a single quotes. 
okay and lines pivot lines all okay so now here your line locations right you will own line locations all this is the shipment as well as distribution information and here PO header ID is there so we can just consider this PO header ID now right PO line locations this will have a line locations see what is the need of line location let us say if you're buying some goods and let us say you're from the head office okay so generally assume that you know all purchases will happen only from the head office and now we have a request from each particular your subordinate locations it can be from Hyderabad. let us say you belong to a purchase order department from mumbai and i belong to a department hyderabad there is another person belong to chennai and bangalore okay so we are we are sending a request to create a purchase order to you to to, to you know like to buy some items what you do you'll buy from mumbai office but you know like uh, in the shipping you will mention which item should be shipped to which location isn't it when you're creating a single purchase or also you may have multiple items each item you can ship to a particular location that's what we mentioned in the line locations understand that's the reason right that's what we have a line location and within a line you can have multiple location let us say you have a same item requested from chennai department as well as like uh, hyderabad department then what you do you'll create a single item there and you'll mention 50 items for one particular location remaining 50 for another location can you see here like this okay now for this also you have to have a distribution charge account i know for charge account also for each line you can have a different distribution and each line you can okay let me tell you for each line you can have a each line you have a different location and each location again you know you have a different multiple distributions again are you getting I'll, I'll i'll tell you one more scenario let us say assume that you know like uh, you are a senior consultant in, in your company and your company offers you 20000 as a mobile expenses nothing but a, a pda offer whenever you join a comp when when you join a, when you join as a new employee to a particular company and the company is offering as per the designation a pda worth of 20000 okay and now you know like it is it is providing 20000 offer but you want to buy you want to buy a 30000 mobile then what you do so it'll tell you'll be telling the same thing to your particular you know like consent purchaser or department you want to buy a phone 30,000 and as per the policy 20,000 will be bought by the company and 10,000 will be it can be deducted from your salary account that's what we do so what you do the purchase order department will buy a phone for you and what they do they have to charge 20,000 from the company expenses and 10,000 from your salary expenses understand okay so that's what it happens so each line can be belong i mean for each line you can have a multiple locations and each location can have again multiple distributions so pivot distributions all okay pivot line locations pivot distributions Okay, so in the pivot distribution also you have the header ID so okay so line ID is a line ID location ID got it so these are the important tables of the pivot module pivot headers pivot lines pivot distributions as well as pivot line locations also so what is the what is a what you say like uh, what is the linkage so let us say you have a pivot number I mean, it's a PO header. A PO header can have n number of lines, right? And each line can have n number of locations. And each location can have a number of distributions. Got it? This you have to remember carefully. 
headers, lines, locations, and distributions. Yeah. So coming to the thing which we are working on. Now let us say I created a purchase order and now this has to be sent for approval, right? Just click on approve. So you click on approve. So it is saying that quantity does not match the distribution quantity. Okay. Yep, this is a quantity. And click on shipments. Okay, so in the yeah, in the distributions we did not mention the quantity properly here. So here we mentioned 100, right? So for each line it should be 50. So we have to change it properly. So there are some default validation which will happen. Yeah, now it's correct. Now I'm sending for approval. Click on submit for approval. And now once you click on submit for approval, it may get approved or it may get, it may it may go for next level approval also. It depends upon the setup of your PO approval. It all depends upon how do you want to perform the approval. You know, like Oracle allows allows you customize your approval hierarchy also. Now, whether you want to have an auto approval, whether you want to have a two-level, multi-level kind of thing. So, in our case, it is an auto approval, so it will get approved automatically. What is the purchase order number? Six zero seven zero. Click on OK. Yep, and you can just refresh this notification here. Refresh. Can you see six zero seven zero now? Standard purchase order has been approved. It got approved automatically. It got approved automatically. Okay. And this was our item number. Item. And can you see the approval sequence? Action history. Yes. It was submitted from and to from stockpad. Stock from stockpad. It went to stockpad again. And initially we call it a submit. Initial process called submit. Next level is called approve. Okay. Now observe here carefully. What is the workflow name? How can we get the workflow name? Now we know that this is a workflow which is a approval workflow or maybe a for your information workflow. But how do you know what is a workflow name? We have to get the item name, right? Item type. Then only we can customize, isn't it? If you want to modify the standard workflow, you have to know the item name. Or item type we call it as until unless you know the item type we cannot you cannot get the workflow code isn't it yes. remember the WF load download if you want to download a workflow you have to know the workflow item name right so now here it is showing right type this is nothing but your item type this is your item type but what is the item name internal name I mean to say so we can get it from here so there are some workflow data tables workflow item types can you see so just mention where name is equal to this one sorry display name got it Display name is equal to PO approval and what is the name? PO APPRV. That is a name. That is item name. If you know the item name, we can, can we download from the putty? Can we download our workflow from putty? Yes. Now there are two ways of getting a workflow source code. If you know the workflow name, now let us say we know what is a workflow name. We know what is a workflow name. Workflow item name is this one. So let us see. What are the ways we can get the workflow? One is from putty, another is from workflow builder, another is from the file system. Let me show you one by one. Let's go to putty now. <coughs> CD home. Okay. Yeah. So now we need to know what the workflow command, right? WF load download. Last class we have done it. Okay. WF load download. So copy this command. Using putty, this is a process. WF load. And what is item type name? This one. This is our item type, isn't it?
okay so it downloaded this particular file and observe from here got the workflow file okay this is one approach and other approaches from the workflow builder also you can get it from the workflow builder also you can get it observe that also open the workflow builder and here click on open and here while opening the file mention the database here but this is you know like this is a tedious approach the reason is if you go with this particular approach what happens is if you are if you are based on a vpn environment this will be very very slow and it will take minimum half an hour to one hour okay let's see in our approach yeah in our case it is quite fast because you know like it's a normal what you say we uh, what you say what you call a virtual kind of thing environment right so it's that is the reason you have fast now what is the name it just shows a name only okay what is the name of your workflow PO approval right search for PO approval PO approval yeah can you see PO approval right so just move it to visible and now okay now try to see this one yeah got it so when sometimes what happens is you know like uh, the linked item items also will come up automatically if you see here this is this was our PO workflow PO approval but you know like the link the linked item types also all the link item types also came automatically that's a basic function that's you know by default functionality okay and what is the third way from the file system what what I mean by file system is you know like what Oracle do is like you know generally for the developers purpose workflow files also the WFT files Oracle will place in one of the location observe here so what we do is let us say in our case I'd like to go to PIVO PIVO batch yeah can you see in the patch folder 11 5 11 like 115 import and type do we have yeah file extension can you see WFT files yes. the size seems very small I think it's not a valid workflow so here but you know this is a workflow generally you know like here at this place this is one of the way where you can get the WFT file also okay but the first is the best approach the first one is the best approach okay using a putty if at all let us say you know like in your environment sometimes you may not have access to putty or you know like it may get delayed due to some other stuff then the second approach is the next best approach and third one also actually the best one but you know like here I'm not sure why it doesn't it is not like it is just showing the size as 81 KB right it won't be 81 bytes it's not a correct one okay got it oh yeah sorry this is the place where you have to see there's a folder called us right this is what you have to do I was checking the outside now here the other problem is you know this names doesn't match with your internal name now here it just shows PYX workflow, ARM, PYX workflow, ATC. You know we don't know what exactly which item is belong, which item it belongs to. That you know what we have to do is you have to open the WFT file and then then only you'll know what is item type which is there in the WFT. Okay, so this is another location. Got it? So there are total three places where you can get the workflow source code. Yes. Clear? Now, if it is a different, let us say in our case it is a PO workflow. That's the reason I am searching in a PO module. If it is a GL, if it is GL, if it is financial one, you have to mention GL. Okay. So far, okay. Or any doubts? Yes. Sir. Yeah. So this is how we can get the standard workflow. So in the standard workflow, you know, like generally what we do is. We will not we will not go with the report approach in the report what we have done we have renamed everything and we create a new concurrent program right 
So here, you know, you will not do that way. You will not rename the workflow. That way, we will not do it because you know, like uh, here, the fun the workflow will be called internally, right? You know, like we cannot do, we cannot change that logic at all. There are many reasons behind it, but you know, like I can't tell you all these things right now. It might lead to some confusion. So initially, what is the thing we want to do is, what is the basic level of thing? What we want to do is, this particular notification, what it is showing here, we just want to modify this one. Okay. Assume that as per our requirement, we want to modify. We just want to show some extra information at this particular description level. That is what we want to achieve. So we'll see that you know, like how can we achieve that? Okay. So we'll do this in the next class. Okay. Anyway, it will take much time. So that's the reason what we do is we'll stop here, and we'll see in the next class how do you modify the standard workflow. Fine. And try to check all these particular, you know, like a uh, table names which I mentioned here. Like, uh, what is the significance of each particular table? So, in the workflow, there is a difference between workflow metadata table as well as workflow transaction tables. Observe this one carefully. Workflow metadata tables as well as workflow transaction tables. So, metadata tables means nothing but like whenever you create a new workflow, the workflow definition will get stored in the workflow metadata tables. And workflow transaction table means like whenever you like uh, let us say whenever you invoke a workflow, at that point, you know, like uh, the transaction tables will have the information like who invoked a workflow, at what point it was invoked, what is the name, what is the message, all these things will be available in the workflow transaction tables. Clear? Okay, so we'll continue in the next class the same same thing like uh, how do we customize it? Okay Yeah, okay. Bye